Uh, right now I'm live on www.ustream, that's U, like the letter U, ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash Aaron hyphen Parkinson. So I'm going to repeat that, www.ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash Aaron Parkinson. Okay, so if you'd rather watch it on Ustream, knock yourself out. I'm live over there and I'm recording this call. So I see this, I can see guests popping in now on my screen. So I know that you guys are you're showing up on the Ustream. So I watched this video this morning sent to me by Gary Vaynerchuk, who's also known as Gary V. And Gary V has been one of my favorite guys for a long time. In fact, the very first 10 for 10 that we held, I, I think we started it with a video that, that was very inspirational for me. And it was one, it was Gary Vee's um, his take on social uh, media marketing at, at some conference a few years ago. If you don't know who he is, he's, he's one of the top uh, 30 most followed people on Twitter and Facebook. And uh, he's very raw. And uh, I resonate with him a lot because he, he just kind of gets to the point. He's a little bit frantic like me sometimes. And I saw this video this morning and I was like, wow, because it touched on so many things that I'm already doing, but I love videos that... They, they allow me to actually understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it as far as, you know, the infrastructure and, and so on and so forth. And, and it gave me his vision of what is going to be happening within marketing as a whole, um, social media marketing, so on and so forth over the next, you know, upcoming years. And it was a really, really profoundly impactful video. And if you're on my Ustream, what I'll probably do at the end of this is I'll, I'll, I'll copy and paste the link up and you can go watch it yourself. It's only an eight minute video. Um, but here's basically the gist of it. We have gone through a major cycle in online communication. Whether you know it or not, the, the, the people that are on the forefront of it know it. The people who are on the back end and they're about to be destroyed don't know it. And here's how the cycle went. Okay, When I got online uh, approximately shoot, six years ago, there was virtually no competition. And the competition that was out there, they were all morons. So you could basically say anything of a, a bit even remote value, and it got you a lot of attention, and it was really easy to make sales. In fact, uh, I think my, my, my budget for marketing was somewhere around uh, $2,000 to $2,500 a month, and I would make seventy dollars to $80,000. And it, it, it was crazy, and it isn't that way anymore now unless you take a completely different route, which I'm going to talk about later. So... Anyone that was putting out any content, if you just even had content, you were the king because everyone else had garbage. Now, the cycle that has happened at this point is now there's too much content, okay? And, and, it's, and we're at the point now where it's starting to be pumped out like a robot, okay? We have now entered into what Gary called the humanize, uh, humanization stage, okay? I like to call it the old school stage, okay? And that's what you can look at it like, is old school business principle stage, except in social media, okay? Information is no longer enough. We've passed that, that point of the cycle, okay? And I want you to understand why, and give you an example of why information is no longer enough. The statistic that I heard this morning, I almost fell off my chair. There is now, according to Eric Schmidt from Google, there is now more content created every 48 hours than there was between the dawn of time, so basically when people started writing stuff down and we started recording it, to 2003, combined. Okay, I'm going to repeat that for you if you didn't get it because it, it's really quite staggering. Every 48 hours, there is more content created online than there has been between the dawn of time and 2003 combined, okay? And this is why this new cycle that we're talking about is starting to kick in. It's starting to happen because content is no longer enough. We are bombarded by so much content Every minute of every day, we are advertised to at least a hundred times more than we were 50 years ago. And we're starting to filter it out. We're starting to just, it's, it, 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 the relevance is going straight down there. 
And the people that are going to survive, the people that are going to prosper in this new, in this new cycle are the people that understand old school, small town service. Old school, small town service is what is going to rule this next cycle of communication. Because content is awesome. But the question is, even if you have the best content in the world and you're pumping it out regularly, how do people feel, and Simon Sinek would talk about this at great length, how do people feel about you, the provider? Okay, because if your content is off the charts, but they view you as a robot or, you know, even worse, don't like you. It doesn't matter how good your content is anymore because content is everywhere. It's, 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 it's easy to find. Okay. So how somebody feels about you, the provider, is what is going to distinguish whether or not you get noticed or how much money you're going to make. Okay. So what is the... What is the point to this? Okay, the point is pretty simple. Obviously, you've got to put out content. Okay, if you're starting from scratch, there's lots of content out there, and you do have to put it out. But you've got to make sure that one, that content has value, that you're giving great value. But there's more than that. You have to give value. You have to reach out. You have to follow up and you have to be a human. You have to have a personality. Eventually, if you do all of these things, if you give value, reach out, follow up, be a human, have a personality, have your personality, not just have a personality, but your personality, eventually, it's inevitable that people are going to want to know more about you. And when people want to know more about you, if you have things set up properly, they're going to eventually end up buying, if they are a buyer, whatever it is that you're selling because they like you, okay? And, and if you're selling anything of any value and you're targeting the right people, the right niche, the only thing that's stopping them from buying from you is they don't trust you or they don't like you. Okay, so how do you overcome the fact that they don't trust you or they don't like you? We well, have to provide great content and treat them like a human, old school rules. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, but I'm also going to string some examples and some strategies through this for you because this is a full contact marketing call. We're talking about marketing, right? And marketing is getting tougher for those people who don't care. For those people who do care, it's actually getting easier. You know, I look at uh, I look at a great example. Um, if you're if you if you don't follow uh, the Rashkins on Facebook, you should. Just even for competitive analysis standpoint, you see how much they Aaron more than Sophia. Sophia jumps in there from time to time, and she always says, "This is Sophia. I like it because it's usually making fun of Aaron." But Aaron is very interactive with his comments in Facebook. He has a following. Okay, he has people who are, you know, part of his legion. And when he tells them to do something, they listen because they trust him and they like him because they know he's devoted time and effort to their lives. Okay? So, you know, first and foremost, obviously, you know, make sure that you have a Twitter account and you have a Facebook account. Okay? But I'm assuming everybody on this call would be to that level by now. If you're not, it's okay. Don't feel bad. Just go get one today. And when you go get those, make sure that the first thing you do is you put a link to your blog in, okay? You can put a link to whatever you're selling if you want. There's nothing wrong with that. But putting a link to your blog gives you more opportunities to expose them to who you are. So, you know, that's a judgment call. I have one to my blog, okay? And on my blog, I have, uh, I have opt-in pages. I have pages to what I sell. I have pages to just another list. You know, that basically says if you want to enter your, your email for free coaching or whatever, do so here. Okay. And I want to share a little something with you. Because I do it this way, the people who opt in on the page in my blog, they get an email from me. 
And the email they get, I can't remember exactly what it says, but I realized they followed me on Facebook and then to Twitter and then to my blog and then to, you know, they've opted in again. And it's, it's a long, it's a long tunnel, right? It's a lot of steps. So when they opt in, they get an autoresponder from Aweber and it says something along the lines of, um, most people, when you opt into their email list or newsletters, they basically send you an email that says, blah, 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 buy my shit. And that gets really tiring after a while. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, if I send you an email, which will be rare, it's because I found something that I think is really cool and will really profoundly affect your life. And I really think it will benefit you if you open it. So when I send an email out to that list, that's like my special list. Okay. I get a 40 to 50% open rate on that list, which is off the charts. People don't get it. 40 to 50% open rates. You get like maybe 5%, 6%, you know, even 10% sometimes. I get 40% because people know I'm not going to send them stuff that's garbage. They're going to open it. Okay? If you're going to post stuff on your Twitter and your Facebook, post stuff, post good stuff. And good stuff can even just be communications with other people. Okay? But post good stuff 9 out of 10 times. On the 10th time, yeah, put something in there that says something that links to what you're selling. Okay? You know, a good headline and a link to something you're selling. But you got to give people a reason to stay. You got to give people a reason to be interested other than buy my shit. Okay? Because that's not a good reason to stay. That just turns people off. So, once out of 10 is, is kind of like the max as far as I'm concerned. Okay? Check your direct messages. I'm shocked how many people won't check their direct messages. If you don't know what a direct message is, go to Twitter and click the DM or direct message thing or go to your Facebook and respond to your direct messages. That's even more interactive than somebody posting on your wall or, or responding to your, your tweet or whatever. That's somebody who's saying, I really want to talk to this person individually. So, that's, like, that's the gold. Respond to, your direct, respond to those direct messages. They're amazing. So one of the, you know, why did I feel that this was important for you today? Well, so many people ask me all the time. They say, I want to make money. I want to advertise my business better. I want to do this. I want to do that. But I have a very small budget. How do I market on a small or zero budget? Well, I'm going to tell you this. If you do a zero budget right it's actually profoundly more effective than a paid marketing budget. Okay, paid marketing budgets are interruption marketing. Okay, interruption marketing basically is like a like a, like a TV commercial. Okay, I'm not sitting there thinking to myself for the most part, you know, I really need to get my oil changed on my truck today, and then all of a sudden a commercial comes up and it's you know from Midas or Minute Lube. Okay, for the most part, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm hungry. I wish I had some Cheetos. And then the Minute Lube commercial comes up. So I'm being interrupted, you know, from my Cheetos thought and being shown oil change. And it's not really resonating with me and I don't really care. Okay? If you do free marketing methods, which I'm going to talk about in a second, well, you're always going to be doing permission marketing versus interruption marketing. Okay? And... If you don't understand the difference between the two, still, with that analogy, go pick up Permission Marketing by Seth Godin and read it because it would be very profoundly impactful for you. So anyways, getting back to what I'm saying, so many people ask me how to market on a smaller zero budget. It is so, so simple, okay? It's called Give Value and Build Loyalty by Listening. I'm going to repeat that. Give value and build loyalty by listening. Okay, so how do we do that? How do we listen? Okay, well, if people are emailing you or DMing you or writing on your wall all day long because you've got a big following already, it should be very easy. You can listen to what they're saying and respond to them and interact with them and care. That's going, how you're going to facilitate a relationship and establish a relationship and make them actually want to buy stuff from you. See, that's the funny thing about humans. Humans genetically are predispositioned to want to do something for people who do something for them. So even if the person doesn't really want to buy your stuff, like they, they don't have that much interest in it, it, 
they almost feel obligated to you to buy it because you've given to them already. It's humans are naturally reciprocal like that. So how do you, if you don't have a following yet, okay, if you haven't built up, you know, a Twitter on it with, you know, a hundred thousand followers on it or whatever the case may be, how do you get to that point? You listen. In fact, I would go as far as calling it eavesdropping. <laughs> There's a great website that I've used for three years. It's called search, so www.search.twitter.com, okay? And I originally used it to see what kind of impact things that I was saying were having on other people, because people were retweeting them, or if they were you know, liking what I was talking about or liking what I was doing, they would talk about it, and I would know right away what, if what I was saying was having an impact on, on my audience. Okay. So it was really more to, to, to do quality control for myself and you should do that as well. What it has evolved into is a couple of different things. Now for the last probably year and a half to two years, if I send something out and somebody retweets it or somebody does a, a follow me Friday or somebody does whatever, I make sure that I, I respond via Twitter cause I can see them doing it on search.twitter. I, I can see them doing it. I maybe even send them a direct message. I initiate a conversation and that's how I build loyalty and that's how I build relationships. Okay. But once again, if you're actually looking to target some, something and build your stuff up, what better way than using a tool like search.twitter.com to find out exactly what your niche wants that day? Okay, and here's what I mean by that. You can find people who want exactly what you want to give and want to talk about. Crazy, huh? And you can respond to whatever their questions may be with their name in the title of your of your post on Twitter, your tweet, or your Facebook, or you can just direct message them the answer. Okay. And so a lot of people, this escapes them how profoundly impactful this is. So let's say you're selling, I like to use my mom as an example. Okay. My mom loves unicorns and, and rainbows and walks in fields of pussy willows. And I love her for it. <laughs> you know, she's great balance for me. So if she was going to have a blog about unicorns and rainbows and she didn't have enough people following her, then she would start a Twitter account and she would go to search.twitter.com and she would type in the search bar, um, unicorns. And she may find somebody that's like, you know, are unicorns really real? And she could respond. Um, I believe unicorns are real, but there's no scientific proof that they exist. And that's it. Not a link to her site, not a, not, not anything hokey, just respond, just give value. Well, if that person likes your answer, they're going to come and check you out. They're going to check out your Twitter profile, which should obviously have a link back to your blog. You're just giving value, just being a human. Okay. Think of it like this. Imagine being, imagine you were Pepsi. Okay. And imagine being able to find out who in the world right now was thirsty. Okay, so somebody has magical Pepsi power to find out who's thirsty today and you instantly show up and you're like, hi, I'm Pepsi and I know you're thirsty. I'd love it if you tried my drink. Okay, here you go. Now, if you had a good product, eventually when they got thirsty again or if they liked it or if they liked you, they're going to come back looking for more Pepsi, right? If they didn't like your product, that's okay. They're not going to come back, but at least... You got right in front of somebody. I mean, could you get any better permission marketing than knowing who was thirsty and showing up at their house like this? Pepsi, right? You couldn't get a better opportunity to sell your wares. So imagine now today that you are Pepsi and you can find out instantly who's thirsty. That's what... That's what this tool can do for you. And this isn't the only tool that does this. I'm just using it because I want to talk about 10 different tools. But search.twitter, you can go on right now 
search a keyword, find out who's talking about it, get involved in their conversation or answer their question and use old school marketing principles. Establish relationship, be likable, create loyalty, create a following, eventually make a sale. Right? Imagine if you devoted just an hour of this a day and you increased your followers by 5, 10, 15, whatever, people a day. At the end of the year, you've got five or 10,000 followers, but they're so targeted and they're so loyal and you've given them such great value by being a human being that you launch a product called the infallible way to find unicorns 100% of the time. Well, how many people do you think are going to buy your unicorn book? Everybody. So, I would like you to grasp this today and start to think of yourself like Pepsi or think of yourself, if you want a more online example, something maybe more relevant to you, think of yourself like Google. Do you really understand what Google does? Google provides value. They provide you a search engine. They provide you Gmail. They provide you G Gcal and Gdocs and all these other things. Do you think, you think that Google just does that because they're just really awesome, nice guys? They could be awesome, nice guys. I'm not saying they're not. But I don't think that their primary motivation is just to give you all this stuff and, and make you love them. But you do because they do. Okay? And what they do is they track all of your buying, thinking habits through Gmail, etc., and then they present you with ads that suit your needs. And when you click on those ads, they get paid. Okay? You can be Google. All you have to do is search, in this case on Twitter, search for people who have questions in your niche and answer them. Eventually, they're going to follow you. And eventually, they're going to buy from you. And what does that make you? Somebody giving value and then somebody presenting something that suits your buying habits. You are now Google. And ultimately, it's only you that's going to decide how big you want to get. It could be just you at, at first. It could be you and an employee. It could be you in a call center. It could be you and a complete infrastructure. You could own the world. Because there's nobody stopping you. See, old... Old school media doesn't control everything anymore. It's, it's an open, it's a wide open game. And ultimately it just comes down to how much effort you want to put in. One thing I will leave you with. Start, I don't care what you're selling, start by searching things that you're passionate about. Passion rules everything. People follow passion. People feel passion. People, people can feel right away when you're just doing it for the money, when you have an agenda. Even if what you're selling is totally not relevant to what you're passionate about, start with what you're passionate about and see if you can sell that same thing to the same people who are passionate about what you're passionate about. And if you can't, find something that you can't sell to them that's in line with your passion. Because not only is it going to be easier to sell, it won't feel like a job to you. Things only feel like a job when you're not passionate about what you're doing. And let's just say that you are lucky enough. Let's just say that by doing all these things, you are lucky enough to build a following. What happens? What happens then? What happens when people start following you? or talking about you, or wanting to talk to you? The answer is, you've hit the gold. You've hit the gold mine. What do you do when that starts to happen? It's common sense. You respond. You respond with courtesy. Ask yourself, what is the most beautiful sound? in the whole world. It's the sound of your own name. People love 
to hear their own name. And the great thing about social media, the great thing about online marketing, the great thing about interaction, is the more you do it, the more people start to view you as an authority. Okay? And the more people start to view you as an authority, the more they think that you're important. And if they think that you're important, then it even has more impact on them when you say their name. It's like the feeling that you get, and I know that we all get this, when I'm kind of a small town guy, you know, when, when Steve Nash talks about Victoria or Nelly Furtado talks about Victoria or whatever, I, I get that instant like feeling of pride, like they, yeah, they came from my town, okay? It's like that feeling you get. It's like that feeling you get when, when, when that celebrity mentions your hometown, except compound it by a hundred because imagine them saying your name on TV. You know, I just want to give a quick shout out to Aaron. You know, all those one-on-one -on -one basketball games, you're the best. Well, how much more effect does that have than just saying the town? It's in my name, right? That's what, the, that's what the social media revolution is. It's the ability for you to become a star and make other people feel good just for interacting with you. And when they feel good, they're going to feel obligated to support you. And that probably means buying something from you or telling somebody they know who could use what you have to buy from you because you're a good guy or you're a good woman. Okay? And if you, I promise you, if you go out and you have fun and you're passionate about what you're doing and you're targeting other people who are thinking and talking about the same things and you act like a human and you play by old school rules, you can build a multi-million dollar business for zero money. And not only will it cost you zero money, your fans, because that's what they become, will be your most rabid, loyal buyers that you could ever find with any type of marketing whatsoever. The world is changing. 